Welcome to Spectrum News at 12. I am Janice Cobham coming to you live from Uyo, the capital city of Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Let's take a look at the headlines. Federal government says no agreement with state governments on fuel subsidy palliatives. Nigeria rejoins UN peacekeeping mission 10 years after exit. Plus, North Korea fires long-range missiles ahead of Japan-South Korea talks. We'll bring you details of these stories and more in a moment. Thanks for joining us once again on the News at 12. Our first report this afternoon is that the federal government has said that it is yet to harmonize efforts with states to set up palliative measures ahead of the June 2023 deadline for the discontinuation of petrol subsidy setup. It, however, said concerned committees would soon conclude discussions with key stakeholders as the administration wounds down. The Minister of State for Project and National Planning, Clem Egba, revealed this to newsmen after the Federal Executive Council meeting, which was presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari. Agba said a committee led by the Vice President, Yemio Sibajo, and the National Economic Council, composed of state governors, had been working to resolve the issue for over 12 months. And away from that, the federal government has postponed the 2023 population and housing census earlier schedule for March 29. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, disclosed this to newsmen. Mohammed said the postponements became necessary as the Independent National Electoral Commission last Wednesday rescheduled the governorship elections to March 18. He also revealed that the council approved 2.8 billion naira for the National Population Commission to procure software to be deployed for the census. Meanwhile, the governor of Bayelsa State, Dio Yediri, inaugurated two committees to collaborate with the National Population Commission on the forthcoming National Population Census exercise, describing it as a critical ingredient for the nation's development. In a separate in development, the federal government has expressed concerns about the conditions of Nigerians serving jail terms in Ethiopia. The chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Erewa, noted that most of the Nigerians in Ethiopia jail were arrested for drug-related offenses. This was made known in a statement signed by the spokesperson Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abdo Balugu. Arewa disclosed that the Nigerian mission in Ethiopia had proposed a memorandum of understanding MOU from the Nigerian Correctional Service of on transfer of sentenced persons to Nigeria with the Ethiopian authorities to complete their respective jail terms in Nigeria and are waiting a response from Ethiopia. We look now at electoral matters where the Casino State Police Command has announced restrictions on human and vehicular movements in the state during Saturday's governorship and state assembly elections. The command in a statement said the restrictions were meant to ensure free and fair elections and protection of the electorate during and after the elections, the statement signed by the command spokesman, Gambo Isa, read that the restriction of movement of persons and vehicles began from 12 midnight of Friday, March 17, to 6 p.m. on Saturday, March 18, 2023. Isa noted that all entry points in and out of the state will be manned and therefore advised parents to warn the awards against any acts of any act to jeopardize the peace of the state. 
A still on electoral matters now, the United Nations says the presidential election held on February 25 revealed the sharp ethnic, religious and demographic fault lines in Algeria, despite the signing of the peace accord by candidates and their political parties. The UN also stated that since Nigeria is standing as a crossroad, engagements in genuine dialogue involving all the stakeholders would be pivotal to calling for accountability to restore confidence in governance. The senior human rights advisor in the office of the UN president, a resident coordinator, Adwa Kufo, uh, stated this during the launch of a national stability dialogue in Abuja. Meanwhile, the country director of international alerts, Paul Nyulaku, advised the president-elect Bola Tinubu to have a dialogue and negotiate with aggrieved political parties and persons in order to douse tension in the country. In a separate development, no fewer than 169 Nigerian trained doctors were reportedly licensed to practice in the United Kingdom in the last six weeks. This is according to the Register of the General Medicine a medical council GMC of the UK, a public body that maintains the official register of medical practitioners within the country. Reports say the council website in the last 42 days reveals that the number of Nigerian trained doctors practicing in the UK rose from 10,824 to 10,986. Meanwhile, the, res the president of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, Emeka Oji, has said there is a need for a review of the salary structure and the government needs to work with the medical bodies to resolve their lingering concerns as well as migration in the country. In another development, Nigeria has rejoined the United Nations peacekeeping operations missions in Mali and Sudan to beef up security at home. However, a statement by the acting head of mission and force commander of the United Nations Interim Security Force for uh, Abia, Benjamin Soya, says Nigeria was inducted back into the UN peacekeeping mission on March 15, 2023. Soya said despite initial challenges, the force had been able to achieve its mandate by protecting civilians and engaging with the two host governments as well as the host communities to encourage dialogue. And back here, a non-governmental organization, Open Forum, has held its 10th town hall meeting to enlighten the public of some issues that need to be articulated by citizens and equally pull for solutions to them. Speaking at the event held at the NUJ Press Center, Information Drive, Uyo, the president and founder of Open Forum, Citizen Matthew Kofi O'Connor, MKO, disclosed that the forum focuses on Save Our Souls SOS by victims of injustice, humanitarian cases and appeals for intervention by relevant authorities, advocacy for the establishment of the Aquabum State Public Complaint and Anti-Corruption Commission, and also a call for the introduction of the teaching of the Nigerian Constitution, Electoral Acts, democratic culture and human rights in Nigerian schools. We'll be able to let the world know and we'll be also be able to reach out to sources, areas, authorities, individuals who have direct bearing to either solving a problem or taking an action that will overall affect the well-being of citizens and the image of either government or individuals or corporation. We are advocating that to make our people have access to justice, Aquaibum State Government should think about setting up the Aquaibum Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission. We cannot allow the fighting of corruption of fighting, I mean, where people cannot go to complain except you go to federal, the state government should be interested so that our people, some of them you are going to hear today, 
they have had their cases over 20 to 30 years and they, they can assess justice. There should be the introduction of teaching of the Nigerian constitution, the electoral act, and democratic culture, democratic culture and human rights in our schools from primary to university level. Public, politically exposed persons have taken advantage of the ignorance of citizens to continue what we know as the Nigerian factor, which we are advocating that we should have the Nigerian dream to replace the Nigerian factor that has to do with failure, with fraud, with criminality, with corruption. Um, we will be able to... Also, at the event, some victims of injustice took turns to narrate their ordeals to the public. They include Na Asanga of Wheeler's Design Associates 1999, Professor Udoyen Udoyen, an author and a clergy 1999, Sabbath Alexander, former chapter chairman PDP Uruganam 2001. Representatives of former staff of Royalty Kitchen and Catering Services Exxon Marble Offshore's 2005 to 2017. Ukeme Awan, representative of 5,000 sacked teachers, 2015. Forum of Ibum Skill 2017. Helen Bassi, 2022. And Faith Morgan. My case in that round. The publication I made, African Linguistic Roots and Footprints, and uh, the invitation of Israeli ambassador, who brought a project called uh, Accelerated Livestock, Fish, and Poultry Production Program of the Ministry of Agriculture at our instance. I presented this book to a quite state government. You can have a look at the picture, see myself and the deputy governor during the book presentation. And the book was approved, sent to Israel, and the Israeli government adapted it and invited me to come to the Israeli embassy. And there they asked me, what do you want? It is my appeal, just like others that have made this platform available for, that please, Your Excellency, attend to my cases. A number of lives are in jeopardy because of my commitment with them. I we move now to Africa, where the UN's nuclear watchdog says two and a half tons of uranium uh, have gone missing from a site in Libya. Reports say the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, sounded the alarm after a visit by its inspectors to the undisclosed site earlier this week, noting that they found that 10 drums containing uranium ore had disappeared. There are fears the uranium could pose a radiological risk, as well as nuclear security concerns. Meanwhile, in a statement, the organization said it would conduct further activities to clarify the circumstances of the removal of the nuclear material and its current location. It is, however, unclear when the uranium went missing. And still in Africa, dozens of Burkina Faso citizens in Tunisia have been repatriated back home in the wake of remarks weeks ago by President Kaya Saeed about, against sub-Saharan African migrants. Saeed had said the migrants were part of a conspiracy to change the country's demographic composition, which triggered racially motivated abuse and violence against them. Reports say on Wednesday, 64 passengers arrived at the Burkina Faso's capital on a government chartered plane. They were welcomed by emotional relatives along with some government officials. We move now to the foreign scene where North Korea fired an intercontinental ballistic missile ICBM 
Just hours before the leaders of South Korea and Japan were due to meet for landmark talks, both Japanese and South Korean officials confirmed the long-range missile's launch this morning. It flew about 1,000 kilometers landing in waters west of Japan. It is Pyongyang's fourth missile launch in a week and comes as the U.S. and South Korea hold joint Navy drills. Reports say North Korea's ramped-up missile activity will most likely be top of the agenda when South Korean President Yoon sung yo meets Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Tokyo today, the first of such visits in 12 years. And elsewhere, 14 people have reportedly died and several others missing after floods swept through the streets of two cities in southeast Turkey, devastated by last month's earthquakes. Among the victims were quake survivors who had been living in container homes since the quakes. Reports say cars tumbled on a torrent of flood water through the streets of Sonlivra, where 12 people died. Also, a container housing two families in Adiyaman was caught up in the floods. The latest disaster came only five weeks after the twin earthquakes on 6 February, in which 48,000 people were killed and many more left homeless. Meanwhile, the governor of San Liuvra, Sali Ayan, has said that his province had never seen flooding like that and officials appealed to residents to evacuate the ground floor and basements of homes. We'll take a break now. Real Madrid, Napoli reached Champions League quarterfinals. Many thanks for still being there. Now to the rest of the stories. On business news, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Amethiele, has urged the governors of central banks and other African financial sector regulators to be more vigilant in their regulatory and supervisory roles to forestall any run on banks in their respective jurisdiction. A statement from CBN said, Amethiele gave the charge at the opening of the 2023 African Central Bank Conference held at the Global Leadership Center, Johannesburg, South Africa. Speaking on the current global dynamics and specific policy developments in Nigeria to address emerging shocks, he advised central banks on the continent to draw lessons from the recent failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank in the United States of America by putting in place regulations that will prevent any run on banks in their countries. And still in business, Nigeria's inflation rate has risen to 21.91% compared to January 2023 inflation rate, which was 21.81%. The percentage represents a 0.09 percent point increase. According to reports, the rise in the inflation rate followed the Naira crisis across the country and uncertainties relating to the just-concluded presidential elections. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics reveal that it is the second conservative month. Inflation is rising in the year after it fell in December 2022. The NBS said the rise in food inflation was caused by increasing prices of oil and fats, fish, meats, vegetable, yam and other tubers, bread and cereals and other foods. We take some health stories now. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health 
Akin Abayomi says 66 patients involved in the train bus collision accident have been treated and discharged from five state public health facilities. Abayomi, who disclosed this in a situation update about the accident in Lagos, said that after a successful two state trade, uh, no other fatality was recorded among the survivors of the accident. According to him, the total number of patients on admission as of March 15 are 30, noting that the fatality figure from the accident remains six, which includes two at the site of the accident and four at Lagos State Teaching Hospital during resuscitation. And still in health, a consultant a neurologist with Zenith Medical and Kidney Center Abuja, Dr. Ade uh, Fapunle, has called for cheaper dialysis for Nigerians with chronic kidney disease, CKD. Fapunle made the call in a webinar presentation at uh, the annual general meeting of the Association of Resident Doctors, University of Ilori Teaching Hospital in Ilori. The physician observed that many indigent Nigerians could not access proper health care and the necessary dialysis required to manage CKD, adding that dialysis ideally should be done three to four times per week. He noted that this might be difficult to achieve because dialysis was an expensive procedure, therefore warning Nigerians against using mercury-containing creams and herbs which could potentially damage the kidney and taking up healthy lifestyles. We move now to sports where Real Madrid and Napoli have secured their places in the quarterfinals of the Champions League after beating Liverpool and Entrach Frankfurt respectively. Madrid defeated Liverpool 1-0 in Champions League second leg to go through 6-2 on aggregate while Napoli won 3-0 to secure a 5-0 aggregate triumph in the last 16. Karim Benzema scored the only goal of the game in Spain as the record 14-time European champions eased into the last eight following a 5-2 victory at Anfield in February. For Napoli, Victor Simon struck either side of half-time and Puto uh, Zielinski added another from the penalty spot for Serie A's runway leaders. And still in sports, Memphis Grizzles, uh, Gad Ja Morant has been suspended for eight games without pay by the National Basketball Association, NBA, after a video showed him holding a gun in a Colorado nightclub. According to the NBA, Morant was also in an intoxicated state and his conduct was detrimental to the league. Meanwhile, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver noted that Moran's conduct was irresponsible, reckless and potentially very dangerous, noting that it also has serious consequences given his enormous following and influence, particularly among young fans who look up to him. It would be recalled that the incident occurred hours after the Grizzlies uh, lost 113 to 97 to the Denver Nuggets. Meanwhile, the All Stars issued an apology after the live broadcast on Instagram on Fort's March. On our entertainment news, popular Nigerian Dix Jockey and producer Florence Otedola, also known as DJ Copy, has announced that she has completed another master's program at the University of Oxford in England, United Kingdom. Taken to her Instagram to reveal her recent accomplishment, the Galato Corner disclosed that it was her third degree, even though she did not disclose the course of study. In addition to the degree, the pink-loving DJ had previously gotten a degree in business and economics from King's College, London, in 2014, a master's degree in, re in music business, which she got from New York University in 2015, and master's degree in African studies in 2022. And still in entertainment, sensational singer Crayon has released his first single of 2023 titled The One Chop Life 
on which it features hit makers Yaba Buluku Boys commenting on the release single. The singer said it is about self-affirmation, having a good time, believing the bad time will not last and understanding that one can celebrate because he or she sees a positive future ahead. And that's how we end the news this afternoon. Do well to follow us on all our social media platforms and ensure to subscribe to your YouTube channel, all of which you can find on our website at spectrumtv.ng. You have been watching Spectrum News at 12. My name is Janice Cobham. Do you have a good afternoon?